Hey everybody and welcome back to me ranking every single war game unit. Today we're gonna continue and most likely finish with the vehicle type, but before we go into the next units, uh, just a brief uh, housekeeping thing. Uh, under the last video there have been a couple of comments that were like, well, yes, the camera in and of itself isn't that great, but it comes in the vehicle type, which makes it better. And I, uh, I agree 100%, but I rank these units Irregardless of the fact that they come in a vehicle type. Of course, for most decks, the vehicle type is kind of like a eh, I'll put a unit in there if I have activation points left. Not for all of them, but for most. Not a, not a whole lot of decks have units in there that they rely on. USSR being an, uh, an example where that is not the case because they make heavy use of the BMPT. But of course, that in and of itself makes a Chimera, for example, better because would I spend you know, instead of spending two or maybe even three points on a tank, I could also spend one point and get a Chimera. But like I said, that doesn't impact their place. Um, but I now made a quick note on the bottom of the tier list um, regarding that, so hopefully that clears things up in case somebody who doesn't watch, you know, these videos and only what takes a look at the list, which is fine, uh, has a bit of context. But, you know, that's just how I did it. I'm not saying, you know, this is the proper way to rank these units, you know. After all, this is mainly done for entertainment purposes and I guess um, for those who aren't armory warriors like me to uh, highlight maybe some units that you aren't aware of. But I think that's that's really all there needs to be said. So let's continue. Last time we did the... We ended with the IKV-105 that ended in... Yeah, B tier. Iltis Milans. Um, I'm usually someone who actually kind of likes ATGM Jeeps, especially the high end ATGM Jeeps. However, the Milan, of course, being not the fastest ATGM as well as lacking range. Not so great. I think this is the first Milan vehicle thus far, right? We had, we had a bunch of Conquerors and Malutkas and some couple of tow variants. But I think that's also like the first proper 24-50 meter range ADGM, I reckon. We had these weird Vigilance. Uh, them being in the... I think this one is in the... Is it in a D tier? It is in a D tier. It is kind of a meme. I'm not saying it's particularly good. Maybe I'm overrating it, but I just think it's very funny. Um, yeah, so I think Milan won not good at all. It is just incredibly inconsistent. I don't think it's quite E tier, but yeah, you know, slow, inconsistent, and you know, only 17 AP. For five points more, you get a whole whooping seven AP. And um, honestly, I genuinely think this is C tier. I wouldn't necessarily really put it in there, but I feel like people really underestimate just how cheap they are, how much AP you get. I think in team games they're much weaker, but in one versus ones, where it can fairly easily happen that you, you have an enemy super heavy or something, and it just engages, let's say, a tank of yours or some infantry with this gun, and then you roll up with two or three of these for like half of its price, and even if just one hit that one hits, but usually maybe even two. That already puts like quite a dent into the tank, especially if you're playing Modo or Mech, where they come at very high veterancy. Um, but of course, the thing is, they get popped by nearly everything instantly, so they're essentially the squishiest unit that you could think of, I think. Because unlike two man infantry, for example, they don't get damage reduction, force, or anything. Um, I've said it before. Not a fan of Ricoh's rival jeeps, so I think there I put the previous one in the D tier, right? The BJ. Where is it? This thing. How does how does it compare? Because this is like I think a different type of Ricoh's rifle. I think it might get different stats. Oh wait. Yeah, look, look, uh, it only has 2 HE, but much higher suppression. I have a feeling that these are, um, that huge in here copied infantry stats, as opposed to making, you know, specifically for vehicle. Because, as you all also might notice, if you look at the coloring of their stats, right, 40%, actually, let's, go, let's just compare this to the tanker show. Yeah, right. 
yeah, th this looks like one to one copied over. And then you just take a look at just at the coloring of you know different vehicle based recoilless rifles. You see, whoops. Um, you see, like thirty percent accuracy, but it's blue. Here it's green. Uh, three HG is blue. This is also blue. Seven RPM here is green. There it's orange. You know, so this also leads me to believe that the suppression might be completely different as well. Not only because it says so in the stat card, but also because I think infantry-based uh, recoil rifles, especially the HE variants of them, get uh, significantly improved suppression. And um, actually, it's the AP version that has more than or nearly three times the suppression. Uh, the HE suppression, for example, is only 50 for the Chinese Jeep, but it's, it's the same 122 for the Anzac Jeep. So... What about the aim time actually? Yeah, the Chinese one has one second aim time on HE and no aim time, which is which is, is the equivalent of 0 0.2 as far as I know, on the AP version, whereas the Jeep has one second on its AP gun. So 0 0.4 more on HE and as far as I understand 0 0.8 more aim time, longer aim time on the AP gun. Quite interesting. Very, very interesting. Not really relevant because what holds us back is not only its squishiness but also horrible range. The Jeep at least has an acceptable range. But I guess it's good to know. Um, we'll take a look at the Rover Wombat. It should also have... Oh. Rover Wombat... He yeah, has normal aim time, of, aim time of 1 second and 1.4 second, respectively. Of course, the Rover Wombat is kind of a meme these days. I agree. This, it seems to have the best recoilless rifle of any Jeep, as far as I understand. Even more range. Actually, pretty good. Given that it's 10 points, pretty good range. And I'm not a fan of it, but I have to I have to admit, you know, I think it the extra range. And also having 14 MP, which means you still double tap 6 armor, which is... No, most IFVs, with the exception of like Marder 2 and the BTRT and the Nakmachon and Achtzerit, um, you know, not not really that bad. Rover Milan, it's just another Milan one Jeep. Uh, I tow Jeep. Did we have an, any tow Jeeps already? We had uh, the Hammer Orev for five points less. You get four. Fewer and worse off-road speed as well as lower HP. I think HP in this case not a big deal because they usually, unless you have them sitting defensively in a position, they're usually not really getting targeted by artillery. But like I said, I think they're actually best used offensively, as weirdly as it might may sound. Uh, but it is an Ito for, you know, 30 points. Honestly, not, not too shabby. And of course the Toe 2, which is essentially 10 points cheaper than than the uh, Humvee Toe 2. Honestly, for 40 points, not that bad. I mean, for 5 points more, you do get the ass left Toe 2. And it has armor, has a salvo length of 2, which is honestly the biggest seal as well as an autocannon. Yeah, see it here. And I know I'm saying well people underrate them and then only put them in the seat here, but I think I think too many people just put them immediately in, in what is would essentially be the equivalent to D or E tier. Kanoniak Panzer, I tried really hard to make this good, but tried really hard making this good. I, I mean trying to shill <laughs> towards Yuchen to buff this thing. I think it got like some sort of buff at some point. Various, but I think it had. I think what what got done, as far as I remember, was oh the last thing that I remember happening is I think it got its AP buff to ten, so it can at least double tap two armor, but for twenty points it just doesn't do enough. Heat isn't very good if you is, heat is very rarely something you like to have. It's kinetic is nearly always better. Um, accuracy is range is actually okay. Accuracy is not so great. 3HE is pretty good actually, 
10 AP heat though means for as soon as it has three armor, you two shots aren't gonna be enough to kill something. And uh, these days, fire support has to be at least somewhat acceptable against vehicles. And for 20 points, needing three shots against three armor, no matter what distance, is just bad. In the past, HE output is all that mattered. These days, not anymore because there's so many IFVs and five pointers around that your fire support basically also needs to deal with. Unless you have access to something like cheap M1 Abramses or stuff like that deals with this. But in that scenario, that is already your fire support as well. And that's why this is actually D tier. I tried this a lot, but it's just not very good. Other VTS1, uh, interesting thing, that thing is actually auto-loaded. Or is it semi-auto-loaded? It is fully auto-loaded. The Kanonen Jagd Panzer is not. Uh, I mean, 6 RPM auto-loaded, eh. It, at least it means that we know if it's panic, the rate of fire isn't complete yet. But the way to, that you ideally use this is like burst shot. Like get 3 or 4 of them and just bully medium tanks in forest and stuff. You lose 1, but with the range scaling you get like 10 AP and, and like force engagements so you basically double tap every, every medium which is cool um, of course no mg means that you're not gonna be particularly good against vehicles but that's not what it's supposed to do it's just supposed to basically kill ivs and mediums outnumber them and just bully them burst them down for all that's purposes it could have also three rpm it's really the first shot that matters and for that it's not too shabby uh, it's just that it's not quite what West German decks need because you have Panzer against 90 and against like IFVs you have Martyr 2s. And once more, you want your spam vehicles and I like to be at least acceptable versus both vehicles and infantry. And um, this is essentially just like a forest fight tank killer. It's not really an IFV counter because for armor and low RPM means at long ranges, it's not that great. Um, like flame flamer units have some have some niche, of course. I said it last time that I think they require a lot of micro. Someone disagreed, but as you know, at least it's just my experience. Um, with a lot of micro to make like really good use out of it obviously you know they can't just sit there and still get a lot of value but i feel like that's not how you get the most out of them in any case i think one armor is just makes them so so much more niche right because the t55s and the i think m48 that we'll see later you know they can at least like withstand all the cannon fire um, this thing cannot it dies so quickly so i think it's really just d tier you know, there can still be some use, but it's just dying so quickly and, you know. Uh, this is essentially like the Jeep M40. I'm, I'll probably just put it, put all the recoils rifle Jeeps in D tier except for the Wombat clones. This is another toe. I just know. The base toe is just not good. Unless you like get it for free or like for five points more. Lauro toe 2 is essentially like the previous to two but for five points more you get two more missiles not really that relevant but at the same time 40 to 45 is not really a big price jump either so who cares um ito it's just like the where is it i think the ypr7 no the y, yp408 pratt uh, it does fire two missiles in a row which is actually not too bad Actually not too bad, but it also has only one front armor. Um, like the difference between one and zero, like I said, usually not that relevant. But if you have two or three or maybe even more, then it's be then it's starting to become very interesting. Like for example on the tour, but then again the tour is already sixty points, so two armor, you know. Uh, I think this is actually one of the worst to two vehicles that you could get. It was just so expensive, but having like no stealth, no auto cannon, no nothing, and it has only a burst length of two either. I think I think you're really better off just spamming to two jeeps at this point. Doesn't have medium optics. Polo, oh baby, the Polo. There's so much good stuff about this thing. First of all, it's a fast Manutka, right? It's not as slow as Manutka. 
Uh, let me give you the missile speed. Uh, I've said it. Uh, someone was asking the question, how can you see the missile speed? Uh, you use the. Let me. Hopefully, I don't leak anything here. Um, you use the armory tool. If I don't forget, I'll leave a link in the description. If not, just search, I guess, Rasman armory tool or something, or just go on my channel and use the search function there. Um, let's just take a look at a Bradley. You can then you go to firepower, have, make sure you have the missile selected, which on the Bradley is the first weapon, so it's automatically selected. And you see max speed and acceleration. As far as I understand, acceleration is essentially the starting speed. Max speed speaks for itself. And then you just look at this. Okay, the Polo with the Maluka 2M, which I believe is only used by this variant, only by this unit. I, maybe one of the Heras also uses it, but the IFVs use different Malutkas. Um, of high, oh, as you can see, a slightly higher maximum speed by a lower acceleration. In practice, it is su it's more than sufficiently fast, right? If you look at the Milan variant, you know you can see the starting speed is the same, but the maximum speed is lower, right? So, on average, it will basically always take lower because you know longer to reach the target. Uh, yeah, so it has pretty good missile speed. Faster, uh, not faster than Toe, but faster than the Milan. And honestly, most importantly, it has three front armor. Doesn't mean much if you go up against super heavy, so anything with you know 21 AP or more on its gun, or the enemy missile system that has at least 17 AP heat. But first of all, that obviously goes for any kind of 18 gem vehicle. Second of all, if you go up against medium tanks across the open field. They won't one-shot you at maximum range. And you cost 35 points. And you will double-tap them. You will double-tap anything up to 16 armor. You won't double-tap K1s. But you will double-tap M84As. M1 Wilks. 2A1s. You know, M1 Abramses. That's really, really nice. Also, you can fire six missiles in a row before having to reload and you come with 18. So, even if you're just gonna kill like five pointers, you're prob it's probably still gonna be kind of worth it, or at the very least, you're not gonna suddenly sit there after killing two five pointers and have to reload for thirty seconds, and then an enemy tank just bullies you down. Keep in mind, you only cost thirty five points as well for twenty four heat and eighteen missiles, acceptable accuracy and range as well. Seriously, a severely underestimated unit by many people, at least. Um. Yeah, thanks for coming to my TED talk. Of course, you know, these type of vehicles, like like most of them here, um, even better in one versus ones because the, in team games you obviously see a whole lot more super heavies and heavy tanks and significantly less mediums. Mediums, of course, very much still being used, but super heavies and heavies are a lot more important in one, uh, team games generally. So th this polo is not going to be as strong in team games. Uh, M107 M1107 Fagot. Um, it is only 15 points, you know. The Milan one is 20 points, for example. Um, for you know, same range, but one more AP. <laughs> I would definitely say it's better. Let me actually check what is the missile speed. It's slower than the Milan. It's nah. I mean, it is only 15 points, but I wouldn't really bother with this thing because you're just gonna tickle vehicles. But the thing is, with infantry fagots, they're very good because you can really just keep them hidden, sneak them around, you know, fill towns and such. But these you can, of course, in theory as well, but they're very easily spotted and essentially instantly spotted if the enemy has any recon around and then instantly dead. That's you can't say the same thing about infantry at gems. The Drug. I mean, if you compare this to the Milan one, the same price you get 10% miraculous and 3 more AP. What's the missile speed? It's the same as the Milan. It's pretty good if you ask me. Uh, is it like a particularly good vehicle? Yeah, honestly, I'll, I'll give it the benefit of the doubt. And, um, you know, I haven't. I, I haven't used it myself, at least not knowingly, or like I don't remember. But like for 20 points. Yeah. 
It's one of these garbage toe thingies again. And then we have a toe two. This one has to reload after every single missile. It's not a big deal for a toe two because it's so goddamn accurate. But if you want to finish off like a heavy tank or something. Yeah. But, you know, I think I probably already went over this with a giraffe toe two. Oh, there's no giraffe toe to this giraffe eye toe. But how, how much does this cost? 35? Hold up. Let me briefly check something. Uh, yeah. Uh, anyway, <laughs> let's go on. Let's not, let's not make this longer than it has to be. P and MK? Essentially, a KFE25 in a vehicle tab or a build cut without your optics and stealth for five points less. It's it's fine. It's good. You know, um, you're not gonna regret putting this in your vehicle tab. Most people don't because you know either they just get a build cut or they just don't have the points. But um, I'm gonna put it this way: if it was like in the Eurocore vehicle tab, you'd probably see it at least being put in there a whole lot because Eurocore vehicle tab is one of the worst ones in the game, which once again doesn't really mean anything because most vehicle types are pretty bad but you know when it comes to vehicle it's it's actually a pretty good vehicle it's a good auto cannon it's cheap it has two front two side it's amphibious it has good autonomy and speed very good base defense outside of the fact that it has no optics but it's not always necessary yeah yeah okay it's it's a regular rifle More of these toes. <sighs> Itos, like the giraffe Ito. Oh my god, there's so many more of these coming up. I'll, I'm just gonna skip these. Two are, that's, actually, it's, that's actually different. It's objectively better K... M slash 113A1 toe 2, which I, I wrote TP. W. Um, like the Danish thing, because if you look at its model, also it's hindered by its set card, it fires two missiles before I to reload. That's really good. Really good. And honestly, yeah, no, it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Oh, you ugly little thing. You ugly little thing. You're absolutely garbage. I mean, you're still like a 10 point gun. But you're not like really useless, but also you're a bit tilted. Look at this. Yeah, well, hold up. Let, let me actually make you see it. Which one is actually tilted? Wait, is, is it all M113s being tilted? Or is this one tilted? I'm. I'm not sure anymore. Maybe it's you being tilted actually. I think now that I look at it, it's this one being tilted. Anyway. Zippo. We had the South Korean thingy magic, but since it has a vastly different name. Then we have the M48. How how much is the T055? I think we have to, we had a German one. Which one did we have? A German one is 35. That's like two more armor. Yeah, two more armor. Oh, it actually has a kinetic gun as well. Okay, so the Zippo has better optics with poor instead of bad. It's Bigger versus armor, and of course, has no actual gun. The gun itself, of course, isn't important, but it's actually still kind of nice to have. The biggest thing here is, of course, five front armor instead of one. And I think at this point, you're happy to pay the 10 points because you just, at any given position where you really use them, you only just need one. 
So it being 10 instead of 20 points when you buy one every couple of minutes, at, like every 10 minutes or something on average, if at all, it's not a big deal. I'm, I'm just gonna stop copying stat copies, putting stat copies in there. Uh, I don't think we had one of these. It's a, I mean, it's an Ito, but for five points more compared to like, the, you know, Giraffe Ito. And past it, you get four more missiles, and once again, the ability to fire two missiles in a row before having to reload. Let me just the unit does not appear in this list. There is a There. Just so in case people are saying, oh, why is this not in the list? Because there's a stat copy. I'm sorry if, if you are not familiar with a lot of units at all, but I just can't be asked, right? So different, all the different su suck, fucked up names down there all the time. We had the Jeep Toe as well. We had an. Uh, Do we have an Ito Jeep? Uh, we must have had. Uh, it's an okay, so M113. A Laro K113. Yeah, those are those are Jeeps, right? K113. I was spending longer looking up if you had anything instead of just writing it down. I know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. How many tow two we didn't have, but it's C tier. It's a fast tow two carrier. You, and once again, you get like eight missiles. Again, I think you you'd ha rather have a cheaper and fewer missiles, but it's also not really a big deal. Uh, and and you know sometimes you know the missile count is actually nice, but I think personally uh, we had a Laro, we had a K one hundred three tow two or a Laro tow two M eighteen. Wow, a completely new unit for once. Um, well, this is incredibly fast, right? 100 kmh off-road speed, which means that abysmal 200 kilometers autonomy, not really a huge deal because autonomy is a timer. Keep that in mind. It's not, it lies to you. It doesn't tell you the distance it can travel. It tells you the time it can travel, which means that relatively low autonomy might not be really horrible if you have very good off-road speed, vice versa, acceptable autonomy might actually be much worse than it looks like if you have garbage off-road speed and of course if you have garbage off-road speed and garbage garbage autonomy that's a bad combination as an example look at the roku ichishiki in the japanese tank tab for 15 points might look like an amazing vehicle but so massively held back by its autonomy and speed stats yeah also can be an interesting balancing tool as we'll see in the next unit but m18 it has actually pretty good accuracy, but only 2 AG, only 6 AP, and only 1500 meter range. This will get absolutely destroyed by any kind of IFV or the like. Um, it'll have to drive really close to be, even be double tapping two armor vehicles. Um, like 4 times 175, what's that, like uh, 700 meters. So you have to be at 875 meters to even double tap two armor. In forest, okay, but in forest, you know, you have one armor, you take full AP damage, so that auto cannons will even wreck you even more. Yeah, it's like sure you spam it, and it's also it's a browning, so it goes range, you know, burst infantry and, and stuff, and it like down. But um, it seriously struggles versus vehicles. It is of course ten points and cheap AF, so it's it doesn't isn't as useless as I may make it sound like. Also, I know the can you actually see that? We can't even see the text just glitching out a bit in the gun mantlet. You know, look at this. I don't know if this is because I don't have maximum graphic settings or I don't know. Uh, speaking of, you know, having autonomy and speed as a balancing tool, M36, incredibly good fire support vehicle. One of the, basically ever since like Blue Mac really became meta in like 2015-ish, mid-2015, I want to say, this has been actually been, at least back in the day, a staple in the deck. These days, not so much anymore because everyone just uses five pointers and M1 Abramses. 
or IFVs or K1s, so you don't see it as often. But if you love this lot, or just CSs, but people, I think it's still kind of beloved. I still really like it, um, especially when I play Blue Dragons. Uh, it has 250 uh, kilometers autonomy, but 40 kmh, which really makes this unit, while still very strong, not like ridiculously OP, because for 10 points, 2 armor, 19 25 meter gun, 3 HE, 40% accuracy, and 8 RPM. Only 8 AP isn't great, but if you get close, you don't have to get too close to at least reach 10 AP to double tap 2 armor. Um, but pretty given in 10 points a very long range gun actually no mg isn't of course too great but you can stay at distance against enemy ifvs and actually have a very good chance of winning because you're also only 10 points of course so you massively outnumber them and with two armor good at range and accuracy you will basically kill most like low t low armor ifvs before they can even shoot at you um so that's a really really nice bonus and of course having pretty good base accuracy and pretty long base range means that at close range you gain a lot of accuracy as well Honestly, uh, this might be our first A tier unit. Um, nope, nope, nope. Bad Mephisto. Uh, we have the Amex Hot, which is essentially like a Mephisto, right? For the same price, I believe you have three front armor instead of one. You also tracked. You know, actually, I wanna, I'm curious. How does this compare to the Polo? How does the speed compare to the Polo? Of course, the Polo is five points cheaper, but I think the I, I know I've currently it is it's the same as a tow, but I think just the, the massive AP difference. You lose range, you gain range, but lose AP. But I, I just think the the. Because at 22 AP, you will not double that 15 armor. And 15 armor is fairly common. It's M84 as it works. Um, and it's not 16 armor either, which is the Leopard 2A1. And of course, it also means you do need less damage to everything that you do not double tap, right? But I think it's actually it's it's quite a significant deal. VAB Mephisto. I think the C tier is... The thing with the C tier is, I think there's a lot of stuff in the C tier, while there's probably... Why the no? I think the Amex slash hot would probably be like at top of C tier, and the Vat Mephisto probably at the bottom, something like that. So there's quite the I wouldn't say significant, but a reasonable power difference within the C tier, which may mean that I have compressed this too much, at least for the vehicle type. Maybe I should spread this out and have more A and B tiers, maybe. But whatever. We had essentially copies of these. Ontos, this used to be, I remember this, at least from what I understood, because back then I wasn't very good, so I can't really tell you what the top tier meta was, but from what I remember, in like early 2014, like early Red Dragon life, his, uh, lifespan, history, launch state, the Ontos was pretty meta. I think it was like 15 points, I reckon. And of course, it fires essentially six shots in very quick succession, with 3 HE and, you know, 30% you know, accuracy and acceptable range, it will just murder infantry. Of course, it has not the greatest autonomy and only bad uh, 40 kmh off-road speed, which means that it will run out of, out of fuel very quickly. Um, only an M60, so not even a Browning, but you shouldn't really use this at MG range anyway. Ideally, you use this like, at like near maximum range, because then you also don't get wrecked by autocannons as easily. But of course, you know, huge burst damage. Uh, generally, probably not too bad, but the fact that it's only one armor means it just gets killed so easily and the 10 points and this like fairly inflexible given autonomy and speed yeah it's also just the fact that in GS so you get the CS which is genuinely S tier um, it is just ridiculously good this thing will shoot until its gun is empty it will never have to reload unless you manage I'm not 100% certain how it works. It may have to reload if you empty its gun uh, completely, then start refilling it, and then try to shoot it. Then the reload time of... Let me check how many seconds. Of 15 seconds might come into play. But obviously, yeah. This... 
uh, yeah, it should at anything. It will stun and panic everything. It is just ridiculous. Amazing base defense, flank defense, offensive use. It is just so versatile and so incredibly strong. Luckily, it is on front, one front armor at least. Combat. This has the same rate of fire as a Martyr 2 gun. It has, of course, also 5 AP, very good accuracy, very good range, but only 1 HD as opposed to 1.5. And it only has 3 front armor as opposed to like 7. It's okay. Right? It's just for 30 points. Only 3 armor means that, yes, at like this maximum range, you will probably win against many IFVs. But as soon as you get any kind of glows, like VVPs, etc., will just murder you. KTs murder you for like half the price. Plus, I mean, of course, they also come with infantry, so they're more expensive. But yeah. Um, but honestly, I'd probably still put this in B tier. I think this is a bit underrated. But then again, people just put in the M163 CS in a vehicle type because it's so good and you don't need anything else. Because while the CS has this range, it can most of the time do the same thing as a combat, but better. Against infantry, this is going to be miles better than against vehicles, you just have M1 Abramses around everywhere anyway. Plus, it'll, it'll just stun and panic any MFVs to death anyway. The I Sherman, again, a heat gun, which isn't great. Pretty bad autonomy and speed, but 3 front armor isn't too bad. Good range, accuracy, HE, rate of fire. Not really too shabby, but costs five points more than the M36, right? For three M36, you're gonna get two of those. Of obviously M36 all the way because same range. Yes, a bit less lower accuracy, but a bit lower RPM. But just three guns instead of two. So you have like uh, 72 HE per minute, potential HE per minute with three M36s, or you have 54 with the Irishmans. I think the answer here is pretty clear. And of course, 9 AP heat means that you will need 3 shots even against 2 armor no matter what. And that's just bad. CEV. Uh, the CV and the Avery got nerfed to... Uh, 3 seconds? It got an aim time nerf um, in one of the last patches, I think. Making it quite a bit weaker. But of course, compared to the Avery, it has actually 13 front armor instead of 12, which means you will survive any uh, kinetic shot guaranteed, assuming you're full HP. But it's not really that relevant, because you're going up against vehicle infantry anyway. So I don't think that's a huge deal. It is a bit faster, and I believe it also has better autonomy, but you also pay 5 points more. But for all intents and purposes, very similar. Um, What's the speed on this thing? It has a burst length of two, which is actually hilarious. One of the only, if not the only jeep where that's the case. It has actually pretty good missile speed, faster than the Chiu mod. Uh, it has the same speed as the tow. Obviously garbage range, accuracy and AP. Even worse than basic tow. It's also 10 points. The thing is, even though it's only 10 points, that's bad. Genuinely wasted points. I guess it's maybe. Yeah, Geomod, like I said, has actually worse missile speed despite being at least seemingly a more modern system. Probably shouldn't be that way, if I had to reckon. If I had to reckon, if, if I had to guess. It has at least acceptable AP and range. It's pretty slow, but you know. I'd rather use a Geomod than a Mud. And Jumad actually used to be somewhat meta when I believe it might have been, it was 20 or maybe even 15 points. Uh, somewhat meta, I suppose. Not like not like huge, but you know, some people really spam that thing. It was, however, before it got a missile speed buff. Now for 25 points, it is a very fast missile, which is nice. Um. Yeah, because it's such a fast missile and also very consistent missile. I guess if I have mud in lowercase, I should also have it in lowercase here. Sturm S. Ugh, this is so. Like, I think at first glance this might lo look so cool, right? Wow, 2800 meter range, but 
you have to reload after every missile and 20 AP for 50 points, 55% accuracy, right? If you compare this to the the mappads, compare this to the for the same price, you come on wheels instead of tracks. Yes, you lose armor, but who cares about armor when you only have one to begin with? You get 5% more accuracy, two more AP. Yes, you lose four missiles, but your missiles actually hit and will arrive at a target before you know break the line of sight. Because I'm pretty sure the Sturm. Unless they buffed it. Actually, it has pretty good speed. Never mind. I could have sworn it had worse speed. It's still not quite as fast as the map hats, but of course, it's still less accurate and packs not quite a punch. And, you know, it is not on wheels, which isn't really made up by the fact that it has one armor and 10 HP. In my eyes, at least. Nope. 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 We already had these. I'm pretty sure we had like, I mean, 10 point recoilless rifle unit D tier, unless it's a static clone or even better than the uh, than the rover one, but okay. <laughs> okay, here, let, let, what, what, why, what's a half track doing in a cold war, please? It has 10 RPM. I don't know, but I'm pretty sure it's not outloaded. I'd be surprised it's not outloaded, but you never know. I mean, I'm <laughs> given the way it looks, I was like very certain, but you never know with Eugen. It has good range. Heat, but 12 AP heat, so it will double tap at up until 4 armor, which honestly not too bad. Um, but only 25% accuracy, it's pretty low, even though it's green, but it's pretty goddamn low. 95 suppression, I don't even know if this is good or bad. What does like the Ice Sherman have? 121. 2 HD only and no MG. I'm I I'm not a huge fan of this. Is this an O or is it just is this a zero? I think it's a zero. Let me check the armory tool. It is a zero, yes. Oh the Pram, very pog. Um Pram is very good. It is a very weird vehicle. Um, whenever, like, there's very, very few scenarios where I'm like, I wish I had a Pram, or I need a Pram exactly for this. This is a perfect situation for the Pram. The Pram is something where I'm like, I guess a Pram could be nice here. I buy the Pram, the Pram arrives, the Pram sits there, and the Pram starts getting shit on, shit on of work done. I'm like, hell yeah, Pram, go. You do, you do it, man. Go ahead, you're the you're best man. And it's just godly. It's... I never expect anything from it and it always surpasses my expectations. But yet, there's never, like I said, never situations where I'm like, beforehand, I know, yes, perfect situation for a Pram. It's just, I don't know. The Pram is just, it's of course unique these days, to, together with the BMPT and the BMP3, I believe. The only vehicles with 2,400 meter, 50 meter direct range, meaning direct gun, not indirect. The CEV and the AVRE, of course, also had that range, but that got changed. And but it's oh, but the BMPT and the BMP3 only have three HE as opposed to five, and I'm pretty sure it also has a massively higher burst radius. Also has a concourse that it can fire at the same time, which is a really nice bonus as well. MG is of course irrelevant, but it only very often means that it'll just sit behind your tanks and shoot at enemy tanks, and it will just never really get shot at. I don't know. It's pog, very pog, and two front armor and like ten HP means it will get mortared because this is actually a kind of anti GM vehicle that will just sit there defensively, so it will be getting arted. But it's survivable enough, I suppose. But it's just a really pog unit that I just, it, yeah, you just gotta buy this on feeling, right? It's. Or if you're like, oh, I have 35 points left, let's just buy a Prime and just have it sit there and then just see how it wrecks shit and... I don't know. It is one of the weirdest units because I just... I can never tell you in, in what situations you should buy this unit. <laughs> I am not a fan of this thing. The past Praga has a horrible rate of fire. It shoots every 0 0.6 seconds, which is pretty bad. That's pretty bad accuracy. It hasn't 
got a very good range. It's just one of the honestly one of the worst base defenses that you could get. Also, as always, I'm just guessing which with what is supposed to be like capitalized and an acronym and what isn't, but PGC sixty three. <laughs> that thing has an even worse rate of fire. That thing shoots every two seconds. Every two seconds. It might just sit there, taka 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 taka. But the actual damage is like the actual damage output is bam. 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 <laughs> I mean, it has three front armor, but oh my goodness me. It is just abysmal. And then it has 15% accuracy. It has... How much ammo does it carry? 48 shots. Okay, I had to briefly pause the recording. I think I was currently ranting about how garbage the PGC-63 is. Shooting every two seconds. Honestly, just because it has like three front armor. You know, it is at least good at tanking HE damage. And to a certain extent, all the cannons. But god, the gun is... This might be like the worst... Quote unquote spag gun in the game. <laughs> Honestly, this is out of the, all the Ito, Ito vehicles, probably the worst one because it has such garbage autonomy and speed. I mean, there are different recoil drivers, but they're DTI. I, I, can't be, I can't be bothered. RBS 56. The infantry at the gym, very good. The vehicle. You you're gonna have to fight in tank again in for thirty five point thirty five No Okay D tier but like the range on the infantry is again not actually that big of a deal like yes of course range is really nice to have but not a huge deal most of the time that you have to fight in gun essentially tank gun range but on the eighty vehicle eighty gem especially on a Jeep forget it Um Raket and Jagdpanzer 1 and 2, they have 17 AP. They have to reload after uh, what I presume are two missiles. Ugh. These models, they look so, so janked. Are they on the same chassis? Like, I'm not 100% certain if this is supposed to be the same chassis, but there's just two different modelers, and that's what it looks like. Just they're either com different sizes, or if there's like IRL actually, because this looks. <laughs> I just oh look you can't even see this right yeah you can't even see this look at this looks like an HS30 chassis and I assume that at least one of them is but my goodness like they have to be like the the way they look there they must supposed to be the same thing right but I just have to think that two different modelers made these and that's why they end up, ended up being different sizes. Like you can't tell me that's not what happened here. In any case, they're obviously both horrendous because of their horrendous accuracy. But let me actually take a look at this. And the, uh, even look at this. The maximum speed is lower than uh, the excel like the starting speed is lower than the maximum speed. So, if I see this correctly or like read this correctly, the missile actually decelerates. Okay, uh, just straight up eat here. Panzer. Jaguar 1. Yeah, I mean, it is actually quite worse than the Amex Haunt because the Amex Haunt can fire multiple missiles in a row. And if, honestly, for the same price, also having more armor, I think that alone makes actually the Jaguar 
detail because hot is hot one is just not particularly consistent and like 40 points for something that is tracked i guess the ito for example with less ap is in c tier but like it's also like 60 percent accuracy i like on these mid-tier gems i actually value accuracy generally more but actually ah. Ach, screw it. The German bias. Not like not, not like a lot of people care about these anyway. Jaguar 2, it does have medium optics. Um this would actually be like really nice. Like not not amazing, but like actually quite a nice unit. If it didn't have that missile like that sub length of one, i.e. having to reload for five seconds after every missile. Because medium optics, three front armor, fast, so they're very good basics for like a very self-sufficient affordable unit on the flank but having to reload after every missile is just what not kills it but just really holds it back uh your g <laughs> your gb2 ontos you know gb2 meaning your worst version of the ontos first of course two shots in a row before having to reload 3 he 15 ap okay range and accuracy but only one armor, garbage autonomy, bad off-road speed. It doesn't actually they carry 16 rounds, which isn't too bad. Rover one, but again, you know the drill, Milan. Dude, these things genuinely underappreciated so much. They're actually really good base defense against helicopters. No joke. Uh, don't underestimate the damage they put out. They have very high rate of fire. Yes, they have a lot of they like range, but they have very good rate of fire. They stun very fast and just stun lock helicopters. Um, the downside is it mostly works in forests, right? Because if the firing gets spotted but they're in the forest, then the other helicopters will most likely not be able to shoot at this, right? So if you have like a relatively deep forest or relatively big forest that you want to hide the CV in but also protect against helicopters, this is probably the best thing you could get in my eyes. Um, I guess I guess what is better is may like be like an NM135, right? The 10 point auto cannon transport. But when it comes to like this is this is generally one of the best things you can get for this. And in that role it is actually like A or maybe even S tier. But you know, just in that role. Everything else is just ew. Um So that's why get, it gets to be in C tier. Uh this is just like the is this, is this actually a style clone or is it like slightly different compared to the M18? I'm genuinely curious. Where is it? Nope, just straight up stat clone. Even the year is the same. But the Hellcat is in Marines. The more you know. Jackson essentially a quote unquote nerfed M36 because they gave it more autonomy and better speed. But that costs it that's for a price. And good because if this was 10 points that'd be ridiculous not only because it's like an objectively better m36 but the autonomy and speed is what keeps the m36 back um yeah it is it is an acceptable fire support vehicle yeah no, nothing more to say uh, stormy also garbage autonomy and speed like the m36 three front armor the gun has 8 RPM, but only 2 HE, only 6 AP, not the best range, but it's okay, better than the Hellcat. 40% accuracy is okay. NMG, actually a bit underappreciated in my eyes. Uh, people really undeservedly call this unit garbage. Wait, did they? Did they patch out the swastika? There's, there used to be... There used to be a swastika on top of this. Did Yuchin patch this out? Like, I don't mind one bit. Contrary. But, uh, maybe I'm blind, but I'm pretty sure they patched it out. I gotta ask. I gotta ask, I gotta ask some of the models, I'm curious. Um, <laughs> in any case. And, uh, yeah. Vastly underrated. I think. 
But then again, you just have the charity here, so that's why I use the charity here. SU100, well, there's one sad thing. It's one of the very, very few vehicles that... Oh my god, what's this now? One of the very few um, vehicle type units that actually come on the lowest veterancy and second lowest as opposed to the second lowest and middle veterancy. Which actually hurts it, not massively, but you know, it does hurt it. I Means it, it stunned longer, takes longer to recover, and it's just less accurate. Nonetheless, for 15 points, actually not bad. Very good range, acceptable accuracy, good HD, good RPM, good AP, 4 armor. Bad optics, not poor optics, like actually bad optics, which is like even worse, of course. But the mobility is, you know, it's fine. It's not great, but it's good enough for this for vehicle. I mean, a bit, a bit better than good enough, right? M36 is what I call good enough, and this is a bit better than good enough. It's just missing a, a small piece for it to be good, but actually, I, I genuinely think it's actually beat here. I think this is a bit underrated. BGC 59. Very interesting unit, just a bit overpriced, I think. It could be like an interesting glass gun, right? Full range, 18 AP, good stationary accuracy, but also like low RPM, low speed. Um, but this is essentially like a... Similarly to the Mardo VTS-1, essentially like an anti-tank, anti-vehicle thing, except that you fight at like... I, I, your ideal fighting range is probably something like... 1500 meter, where you do gain a good of, good amount of AP, um, but you don't need to be like at point blank range, which means that your off bad off road speed isn't that big of a deal because you're not a forest fighter, right? You're a medium range fighter. If you go up against like stuff above your weight, but 15 points, 18 AP kinetic, and you don't you can actually you know you don't get just murdered by uh, IFVs, and you have a turret and a stabilizer, not a good one, but you have a stabilizer. Could be an interesting unit, but it's just I think it's just a bit too expensive, honestly. Because you essentially pay 50 points for something that's just like a medium tank kind of hunter. But um I think even if you get two of them, that's not quite good enough. You know, you you'd need two to count an 85 point tank, and even then you're not very consistent, I reckon. And just because you're just you know you don't have optics. You still rely on a lot of other units, so for 50 points, just not quite good enough. Might be fine in the mech deck. PTC 89, less armor but more punch, right? You get the 3 AP, more RPM. You're also auto loaded now, but you're also stationary, which is not nice. You have a turret at least. Um, it makes big boom. <laughs> And I just, I think it's a situation unit. I think it's speed here, but it is a it is a situational unit. It can be nice at times, but it's, you really have to fight at max range. Um, it actually gets quite countered by super heavies most of the time. I feel because it can't fight them in long range, so you have to get close. But if you get close, you come into danger of getting like killed by IVs and the like. So it's just a damned if you do, damned if you don't kind of situation. As you wanted to, very good fire support vehicle. Used to be absolutely amazing. Like, it, 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 there were various stages. I think the first stage that I at least remember, there's probably been a, a few more stages, but the noticeable stages were 15 points, 5 AG. Then it got nerfed to 20 points, and then changed to 15 points and 4 AG. The 5 AG one was absolutely ridiculous. The 20 point one nobody used, and now I think it's in a good state. In a good, it's strong. The KBVT is actually really nice, which means that especially in forests, where the 7 AP heat is really annoying, you have the KBVT that with range and accuracy and, and AP scaling actually helps you deal with IFVs and the like. So that is actually quite, quite, quite useful to have here. Like, probably one of the units that benefits the most from having a KBVT instead of having like a normal 50 cal or something. Not of is weird. There's like one player that I remember ever like or like using this unit frequently, and that's Ronan Iceman. If any of you remember this player, I think he's actually played recently again or came back to Wargame, but I just don't see the appeal in this unit. It has two armor only. I mean, there's medium optics, but two armor. This kinetic it has an auto loader. Like the gun is okay, but like 
two armor for 35 points and like you can't even fight at long range because you have 13 AP and most tanks that people bring can't even penetrate. Honestly, I, I just think this is genuinely garbage. SC76M, there's one cool thing that's medium optics for 10 points. Other than that, two armor is nice, the speed on the autonomy is acceptable. 15 RPM straight, no outloader shenanigans, just 15 RPM straight. Garbage range, garbage accuracy, garbage AP, 2 AG. Um, I really tried making this work. I assume that in mech it might be fine. Outside of mech it's just so lacking. You might think, well, yes, it has garbage accuracy, but 15 HE make up for it. Uh, 15 RPM. Not really. You miss your shot, then an IV kills one of the four, one of the AC76s out of the four stack, and they're all panicked. <sighs> Absolutely worthless against vehicles. I, I still think it's easier because it has two armor and it does have medium optics, which is actually really nice. Ah, this is just so. Ugh. ATS-103, also we're ne nearly done, uh, ATS-103, uh, compared to the Norov, like for this, for 5 points less you have the same AP, same range, a bit less accuracy, also lower, it's, it's just also not particularly good, but it, it also has medium optics actually, wow, what the, what the hell, and like the same, did Eugene just copy like these vehicles chassis stats over except for being amphibious? Because of the same speed, same fuel, same autonomy, no same armor. What the hell? Like how how is this medium and how is, how how are they not two different sizes? I mean not like I guess in game armory size actually matters. Also you can't even see this. In any case, I also don't think this is very good. Honestly, Terra Musti. Okay, this is one an except, uh, exception because it does have 16 AP. It does have 16 AP, which means that it will actually one shot two armor. It has bad range, but it once again, uh, stats of the recurs rifle infantry squad. Look at the massive suppression as, again, right? Um, but I think the fact it does have 16 AP, even if it has horrible range. I might actually put this in C tier. We had this T55, we had we had TO62. Probably a better T55, TO55, because yes, it has lower speed, it has better optics, and it survives a spike up front, which is actually pretty nice. Still though, I think the same I still think that they are to get like good value out of them. It's just a bit too much micro required, and even then it's situational. I think that's really the main thing, that how situational they generally are. Did you have Conquers Jeeps? Actually, are there any other Conquers Jeeps? There are none. Interesting. Well, well, well. Um, there's the first thing, first time for everything. You guys had Conquers for 25 points. I think Conquers M is actually fine. Conquers, but... Mm, how much are the Itos? 13, 13, 40, huh? Honestly, I think they're both C tier because of the range they have. And like, I, I noticed this on the on the Pram, the vehicle Pram. Just having just these long range 80 gems around, like long range meaning 2 6 to 5, 2 6 to 5, or even longer. Uh, just even just sitting there around, you can get some nasty side shots. And I, and I know that I said, well, you should use them offensively, not defensively. Um, You can you can really the, the range is really what what makes them good I think, but twenty five points. Yes, they, they don't have the same speed as a tow, not the same accuracy, but the range can be really nice. Okay, now we're getting into the territory where soon it's gonna be obstructed by the tier list. Can't scroll on any further. We want fifty seventy six millimeter. Well, it's heat. S two armor, but it's heat. Heat is, heat is just bad. Heat is just bad. Don't use this unit, please. You can't even call this a ghetto MX, and it's even worse than that. 
The 90mm version is at least acceptable. It has this range, but it's more accuracy. It's kinetic. It has 3 HE. It's it is better, trust me. Um how's it compared to the ERC? It's 19 meter 1900 more okay, okay. Um I still think this is worse than an ERC if we know it has two front armor. Because it's also it's only 8 AP, which means that at maximum range it cannot even one shot KTs. And honestly, this is probably their their biggest role is just one shooting uh, one armor vehicles. And KTs are one armor. LAV25 we had, Weasel 1 Mark 20. This is just base defense. Like it has good off-road speed, but the autonomy means that offensive uses offensive use is just so bad. Because with one armor and the CQC essentially, auto cannon, this just doesn't work together. Um what you'd need is really high autonomy so you can sneak this around. Then it would have a role other than base defense, but low armor and low CQC auto cannon, not a good choice for offensive use. For base defense, it's fine, right? Really high rate of fire, put this in forest similarly to the quad browning, and it, it can be acceptable acceptable base defense. But that's it. That's really just it. But this is not as bad as the Weasel one to to. I just no. You can you can maybe get this to the front line and then not move it ever again. <laughs> just no, this is this is bad. And then no, okay. I'm sorry. And then it doesn't even have any other redeeming qualities. It doesn't have any extra miss like it doesn't have a whole lot of more missiles, right? Compared to the Humvee Toto, which is also 50. It got two more missiles, that's it. It doesn't have like two tubes or anything, no auto cannon, nothing. It's just <laughs> City of 89. Um your GP2 Hafiz. 28 hour with range is really nice. Uh, 24 AP, it packs a punch. 50% accuracy is nice. It's just really inconsistent. Uh, how? What's actually the missile speed? Is it like TO2? Um, I, yeah, it looks like TO2 missile. Um, I just, outside of mech or motorized, it's just really inconsistent. But uh, 50 points and such good range and AP. Maybe it's just that Red Dragons is so bad that nobody plays it that this falls a bit under the radar, who knows. Afghansky is as if the CS was not that great. Um, it's actually not that amazing at base defense because of its low burst length. And the Afghansky fires for 10 shots and then has the reload. Like the, it shoots for, it shoots at a very high rate of fire, but it's just not a whole lot of shots. And then has to reload for five seconds. It's still probably like, Usable, not not accept, not good, but usable base defense. I would never use it because you get scratches. But like, it's 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 not great. Maybe it's D tier. Maybe I'm a bit overrating, but I don't think it's like that bad. BMVT easy S tier. I never understood why Eugen buffed it from seventy to sixty points in the last war game patch. I just I don't know. It's ridiculously good. That's all I have to say. Make sure that if you use this in close range engagements or in any range where it, where it can use the autocannon, turn off the main gun off because the the autocannon has higher DPS and uh, but it, whenever it can it will prioritize the HE gun over the autocannon and it cannot fire both at the same time. You can of course if you have nothing else to do micro it so that you shoot with the HE gun and when it's reloading turn it off, shoot with the autocannon, turn the HE gun back on, shoot with the HE gun and re repeat and so on. If you want to, it you know it will boost your DPS against infantry or your HE DPS. But other than that, most of the time, if you fire at auto cannon range, you want to turn this thing off. Um, but it doesn't mean this is useless, of course, right? Uh, sometimes you can really pick up some infantry squads that are you know, trying to move out in the open at long ranges or something. So this can be nice. But most of the time, it's a great launch and auto cannon combination coupled with a good speed and high front armor that really makes this unit stand out. And then the last units I said is used that we already ranked. So um, yeah.
I obviously I know I really sped through this over the, in this video, but I think most people don't care too much about the vehicles here. I was sort of like basically S to B tier. I think C, D, and E tier is just full of stat copies and stuff. And um, yeah, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something. And next up, I guess we'll do helicopter transports, and then we have helicopter and air tab left. Um, and yeah, hopefully you enjoyed it, and I'll hopefully see you next time. Later!